Well, let's dive into configuring HSRP. First off, a little groundwork. Your gateways, whether they be distribution layer switches like this or routers connecting to the internet, are going to be organized into standby groups. Keyword, standby. Everything you do in HSRP has the word standby. So when you configure the virtual IP, it'll be standby IP. When you show to verify, it'll be show standby. Debug, debug standby. So standby, standby, standby. You'll see it again and again. One of the gateways you're going to configure as your active, or think of it like your primary, right? The one that's servicing the request for the virtual IP address and MAC address that you create. The other ones will be standby. So whether you have one backup or five different backups, they'll all be considered standby and there will be one uh, active or one primary. Well, I wish you'd get in the word habit of using the uh, keyword active, right? Uh, by default, if you don't tune in anything, which we actually will tune it in here, it will say hello once every three seconds, both of these guys, and say you are dead or have a hold down timer of once every 10 seconds. So worst case scenario, you've got 10 seconds when this guy goes down before the other one takes over by default. Final noteworthy item before we move on is the virtual MAC address that HSRP generates is well known. So Cisco, when they run HSRP, of course, bought a whole clump of MAC addresses that they use for their devices and own the first six hexadecimal characters 00000C, right? That designates Cisco. And then you can see right here, 07AC, that tells you that you are running HSRP version 1. That is the well-known, and version 1 is the most popular one out there, right? And then the last two digits, hexadecimal characters, represent the standby group number that you use. You remember that you can actually use 0 through 255, or have 256 HSRP groups, and you'll be able to tell which one you're using based on that number. So you want to be able to pick that HSRP MAC address out of a lineup, right? Very useful for the real world and, of course, the CERT exam. So this is going to be what we configure. I actually have this configuration set up right now. Two layer three switches. I've got the VLAN one uh, SVI, switch virtual interface, configured on both of them with dot two and dot three. We're going to set up a virtual IP address for this. I have a server sitting here at dot 25, which is going to be our little test subject to ping up here. Let's make it happen, right? So I'm going to go up here to, let's go CBT switch one. That's the one on the left. Do a show IP interface brief. You can see that I've got VLAN one. Oh, just went past it right there 172.30.70.2 which matches my left hand side do a quick show run interface vlan 1 you can see not much action going on there okay here's what we do global config mode type in interface vlan 1 and we're going to use the keyword standby standby and then you can see you can just go at it and start setting up hsrp parameters at which point it assumes standby group 0 or you can type in a group number just out of habit, I think I always use VLAN, or not VLAN, but group number one. But I usually will match the group number to whatever VLAN interface I'm configuring this for if I'm doing it on SVIs. So standby one. Now I'm going to type in uh, my next command, which is always, at least I always do first, the IP address. What is the virtual IP address? This is this line right here, VIP. I'm going to say 172. 30.70.1 and you can see when I hit the question mark there's no subnet mask needed because it assumes the one from the uh, interface whatever you have configured as the real interface IP address believe it or not I've actually already configured HSRP if I do a show standby uh, right there I, you can see it's waiting to come online it's currently in this listen state where it's listening for other hello messages from the other HSRP routers it's not going to hear any but it's waiting to promote itself to essentially the master router and you can see right here, or I should say active, I don't want to cross terms with VRRP. You can see 000C, does that look familiar, right? Just from the last slide. 07AC, it just went active by the way. 07AC, and then there's the group number, 01. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying how it generates that virtual MAC address. And if I look right now, you can see it's online. Matter of fact, I can come over here to my server. This is it, and I can even ping it. 172.30, no, dot, yes, dot 30, dot 70.1. Responding to ping, I can do an ARP-A, and right there is 70.1. There's the MAC address, just like I see it should be on the screen right there. That's, that's why it's so useful to be able to recognize that MAC address out of a lineup for HSRP version 1. All right, let's get fancy. I'm going to go into uh, global config, back into the interface VLAN 1, and I'm going to type in standby, group 1, priority 110. Now, What's that all about? Well, you can see the default priority for standby routers are 100. That controls who becomes the active and who, whoa, 
<laughs> my my pen's running out of ink. Uh, who becomes the active and who becomes this? I have no idea why it's doing. Hang on, let me just. Eh, there we go. Uh, who becomes the standby router uh, by time it's said and done? So um, the one with the highest priority does become the active one, which is going to be 110 in this case, right? This one's going to become the standby at 100. Now, why do you care? Well, first off, you typically care because you have kind of a primary switch that you want to use, but also it really comes in big when you use something called interface tracking. Interface tracking allows this HSRP uh, router to essentially watch an interface, and if it goes down, decrement or subtract a value from its priority. Like, for instance, this is fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 right now that I have connected down here to this, this server. If this goes down, I mean, think about it from a, a, a switching perspective. The traffic from this server will now go up here. Well, actually, it won't, won't go up there. It'll go right here right here and then cross this link and then go out this this switch with i'm like eh, i don't want that if that interface goes down i'm like dude you're gone you're no longer the active device but the only way i can do that is make it lose some priority like drop that down below what the secondary is going to be here's how you do it i'm going to type in standby one track and now i can say what interface i want to track well in this case it's fast ethan at zero slash one and then i'm going to say here's how bad it's going to affect your priority should that interface go down 20. it's just enough right that's going to take it down 20 points to 90 which will put it less than this than the secondary or the standby device right and then this guy will take over did you follow that if this interface comes back up, then the priority goes back up to it, and now now we're uh, back at 110, and we can take over. Now, all this takeover business is always, uh, I, I need to emphasize this command right along with that tracking, it is the preempt. Preempt, which you should type in on both the active and the, the standby switch, says if somebody's priority goes below yours, take over. If you don't type this in, essentially at boot time, they make the decision, or as soon as that group goes active, it says, oh, you're higher than me, you can, you can have the active. But if it goes lower real time, and you don't have this preempt typed in, the other one's like, ah, okay, you know what? Next reboot, we'll kind of figure it out, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll be the primary then, but I'm not gonna be aggressive. I'm not going to push you down, uh, but preempt is like, be aggressive, be mean, knock the other guy down. And that's what we want in this case. Now, one of the dangers of preempt is you could have a rapidly rebooting router. You ever have that? Like a device that where hardware is starting to go bad and it starts rebooting again and again and again and again. Um, it, well, that's not good. Essentially, it comes up. If preempts can figure, it's like, I'm taking over, right? And then it crashes and then it reboots and it takes over and then it crashes and it reboots. And every single time it does that, it's causing an outage. Well, what we can do is we can actually say standby one preempt. Well, let's add a little delay to that. Now, I don't want to always delay. I don't want to do like a minimum because that affects my convergence time, right? I want to say if we're reloading, meaning the router has rebooted because something crashed, then I want to wait this amount of time, this number of seconds. Want to hear Cisco's advice? Cisco's best practice says, if you want to figure out an accurate amount here, take the router boot time. Let's just say this router or layer three switch takes two minutes to boot which would be 120 seconds, right? Take the, the boot time of the device, divide it by two, and that should be the amount that you configure for that reload timer. So in this case, it would be 60 seconds. So essentially that means this layer three switch must be alive and healthy and well for 60 seconds before it fails over. Now, why do they give that advice? Well, because remember, the router booting isn't like, woohoo, everything's good. Right? The router booting means like the router's booted. It still has to converge on OSPF, get all of its routes, start forwarding packets. I mean, give it some time to breathe, man. <laughs> it's like the basketball player just came on the court. Don't throw him the ball yet. Just let him run down to the other side first and get warmed up. Anyway, that's that's the idea of of uh, delay, reload, preempt, all those kind of things. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anyone anything else I want to show you. I think I think at least initially, that's that's good. Let me move my console cable down to switch number two. And let's, let's review those commands in a flyby kind of way. Let me just do a show run interface VLAN 1. You can see that this guy's not doing much at all either. So we'll go interface VLAN 1, standby 1, and we will do uh, IP address 172.30.70.1. Again, they're both agreeing on that same IP address. Uh, standby, we don't have to type in the priority because the default is 100 right uh, we'll do the same track command we'll do standby one track fast ethernet zero slash one and just and i'm just doing this because we're consistent by the way 
in the real world, if you did this, you'd probably have it all in Notepad and just bam, blow it in there. Uh, we want to have standby one preempt, and we want to make sure that we put the uh, delay on there for reload to 60 seconds as well. Again, just mirroring the other side, and also so it takes over uh, should something go down. Uh, let's do a show standby. You can see from the status messages, some stuff just happened. It's like, hey, my state is currently standby. Well, why? Because he's the secondary, right? Who's the active router? It's this guy. Switch number one over there, 172.30.70.2. Uh, Isn't that awesome? So, so we've got now HSRP going on. Now, we also, this is, this is neat, we've got priority 100, default 100. We're tracking interface such and such uh, that says state up, decrement 20, right? So we will decrement 20, uh, 20 priority values if that interface ever goes down. This is cool. Okay. You want to you test it with me? Let's do it. I brought up my command prompt on the server, and I actually downloaded a cool tool. I, I tried this with ping, and I was like, it's too slow. I want to show some, some uh, convergence time. So I downloaded this tool called fping. It's a, it's a free one. You can actually just go online, type in, uh, I actually found it using, I just typed fast ping in Google and found this one. So I'm going to do an F ping uh, to 172.30.70.1. And I'm going to change the time between two pings. I'll put dash T 10 milliseconds. So we can just get some really fast ping so we can see how long this takes uh, to fail over when something bad happens. Now, again, the topology that I've got is exactly like this. I've got an access layer switch. Actually, I guess, realistically. I actually have a server connected to an access layer switch, which is connected to both of the uh, HSRP routers like this. So we've got you know primary one, primary two. So we can actually see when I unplug this how long it takes two to take over, right? So I'm going to have uh, dash T10. I'm going to put dash C, which is the continuous ping right there. And we should just see... Little flood going on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, so we've got this uh, this ping attack going on the HSRP address. Watching the lights blink like mad on my router. Okay, let's um, let's see. What do I want to do? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I've got the ping going. I'm like, okay, let's make something happen. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the uh, the uh, connection right here uh, to this this guy. I'm gonna sever the connection to switch number one, and let's watch what happens. Bam, it's down. Okay, so this guy, I've got show standby. It's, it's still doing the hellos. I've got request timed out. Uh, you know, hello is being sent. It's like, all right, next hello is going on. Oh, bam, there it went. It took over. Not bad. Not bad. Right, right. Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to plug it back in, which, and by the way, this, this only happened because we had some uh, preempt configured, right? Preemption is enabled. Uh, it took over. So I'm going to now plug the primary back in. Uh, and it should take over. That shows standby. This guy's still active. Okay. Oh, did you see it? Did you see it? You see the little pause right there? You can rewind if so. It's now about gone back to speak. It's like, okay, okay. I just got smacked down. Active router's back in place. Okay. Last command I want to show you on this. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go over to the primary again. Because we're using the default hello timers right now, which is three seconds and ten seconds. So I move my console cable back over. I'm going to do a show. Well, actually, we'll just go in there. Uh, interface VLAN 1. I'm going to do a standby group 1. The timers, but this time I'm going to go msec. Right? I'm going to put my hello timers in msec. So I'm going to say the timers, you can go low. You can go really low on this. But check it out. I'm going to do msec. So I'm going to say hello once every 200 seconds. You might be like, well, let's go all out. Let's go 15 milliseconds on there. Well, the problem with that is they're like, yeah, well, we can only specify a dead timer of the lowest you can go is 600. So if you go 15 on your hello timer, you're just like, hello. You're like totally hammering the other side, but it still has to wait, you know, 600 uh, milliseconds before it fails over. Let's, matter of fact, let's give it 650. Come on. That's still a really good uh, convergence time. Uh, I'll jump down to the secondary switch, do the same command. Config T, interface VLAN 1, and let's just paste that bad boy in. So now the, they should have mirror. So we saw how fast it went before, right? <laughs> let's, I'm, it can, I can't tell you how excited I get doing this kind of stuff. All right, all right, I'm back on the primary. All right, good, good, good. All right, let's, uh, I don't know why I went to the primary. I'm back on the secondary. Okay, here we go. I'm going to unplug the primary. Ready? One, two, three, pull. <laughs> oh, 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 that was awesome. Hang on, show standby. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So hellos are once every 200 million. Look at, look at how fast it's setting its hellos. Okay, I'm going to plug the primary back in. Come on, tell me. Imagine when in your environment this kind of failover happening. Did you see it? It just went back. 
Okay, okay. Major failure. Catastrophic switch. Somebody, somebody pulled the plug on the primary. Bam, it's down. <gasps> oh, it's back up. Nobody even noticed. A voice over IP conversation. They're like, oh, uh, uh, sorry, what'd you say? It was kind of a good... Not even realizing a major $10,000 switch in your network just went down and nobody noticed a thing. That's, that's, that's cool. <laughs> so that's, that's tuning HSRP to the max with uh, adjusting those hello timers. And that is configuring HSRP in all its glory. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.